Hi, do you want to know how to have success in Lightroom and how to start a developing process in Lightroom easily? Because the easy way is always the best way to do something, also the difficult thing. And to do that, I will share with you my tricks and secrets about my personal workflow. So no secret with you. Okay, if your answer is yes, follow these lessons. Today I want to share with you my personal workflow in Lightroom, explaining you how the things could be so easy sometimes, all the times I would say. And all the people that say that something is too difficult so they want to use action, buying something, or they don't share something because they think it, or they say that it's too difficult to share. Don't trust them because the software is really easy to use, you can achieve amazing results you need just only to understand what you are doing and how it works. Okay, follow me because step by step we will achieve amazing and difficult concepts that you can use so easily in your process to customize your workflow, okay? That's me. Um, so, what we did the last time, just in creating a catalog, selecting the pictures, you know, that want, we wanted to post-process. And I've added some pictures because I think that some of them could be interesting for our post-processing to explain how to, let me say, work with shadows, the sky, difficult black backlight and so on. So I want to share my trick and secrets, but explaining you exactly how to manage those things, okay? to adapt them to your workflow, to your mood. So let's start. You can see something really interesting in the nature that we will, we will post-process. So we can try starting from this picture, for example, from an action. Uh, I want to see the, the picture in one-to-one -one zoom, just to see it bigger a bit. And what you have to do is this. Look here, in the upper part, right upper part of the screen, you will see the library menu, the develop menu, the map menu, the book menu, the slideshow menu, the print menu, and the web menu. We will start post-processing, so we will jump, we will switch from the library, that is the catalog, in the develop menu. And what is happening is that on the right, we have many menu. You can see the basic, the tone curve, HSL and color, split toning, details, lens correction, transform, effects and calibration. And on the left, we have many, many things. I, I, I play it a bit with this picture. And uh, I prefer to cancel, to delete all the action, the automatic actions and process already done by other people. I want you to understand what you are doing because it's very easy. Don't buy anything from other people. Just learn. And I think it's more about satisfaction and so on. So let's go. We'll start from here, post-processing. But first of all, I have many, many, many students that usually ask me how to start and where to start because they don't know what to do. They say, I, have an I think to have an amazing picture, I would like to post-process it currently, but I don't know what to do, Claudio. So um, I give you my method. What I do usually, look in a picture, when I'm watching something done by me, or by another person, the first thing I pay attention to is the composition. So, first of all, the composition of the picture. Then, I manage it with the crop. You will see how I do it in my workflow. Then, the second thing is to pay attention to the white balance, let me say, to the tone, and to the presence. Tone and presence, make them together. So, first of all, composition, then, why balancing tone and presence? For third, I jump and switch to colors, you know? Then to the detail, details and the defects. This is the way to post-process in Lightroom, nothing more. Okay, let's start from the first one. So, the composition. The composition is really important because 
we did, we spent so much effort in the field during the shooting that it's nice to explore the situation that we have taken during the shooting. For example, about this dog, but it's not about this dog. It's about everything, okay? You can do with every dog the same thing. What to do? The composition. Okay, it's very an easy composition where I will try to put the dog in the center and it's not in the center in this moment. Uh, what to do? How to do? How to proceed? Simply, we are in the develop menu. Let's start from the cropping. So, first composition that we will manage with the cropping. So, crop overlay. I will clip, left click on it. This is what happened. I see something. For example, I'm seeing an overlay of thirds, but you can see whatever you want. You can go here in the upper menu, click in tools, crop guide overlay and select what you prefer. If you prefer the thirds or you prefer the golden spiral, for example, sometimes it could be interesting because it's another way to create a composition. Or you can select, for example, the triangle. So there are many ways to visualize what you, or to understand what to and how to crop something. I prefer to use the easy, easy way of thirds. So giving uh, much powerful in the things that are in the line or in the crossing point generated by the lines of thirds. So in this way, I want to crop the picture. First of all, I will make it just a bit crop it, so smaller for first. How to proceed? Look, when I click at this, uh, this button, this is what I add. So the tool call it crop and straighten. First of all, I will lock the original, the original proportion of the picture because I don't want to change it, but you can. You can click here and change the proportion of the picture. I prefer to use the original as shot, blocking, clocking, locking the picture in this way. The second thing, but usually is the first for me, I will click the angle because usually it's not perfectly straight. So I will click the rule, click in the first, for example, I will use, let me say, the focus plane to make it correctly and clean it, okay? So I will click here in the shadow, drag and drop the mouse to the second point, for example, here, and I will release, I will release the left click of the mouse and the picture is correctly let me say incline it okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to make it smaller making let me say the rule of thirds to let me say to rule a bit i will use the rule of third just as reference to post process my picture for example i can make it here or here, I don't know, sometimes I put it in the eyes, but not in this case. I prefer to do something like that. So putting the, the center between the, the back and the nose that is here in the third, something like that, okay? And I will click Enter. And this is the picture that I post-process. Then I can click again the same button to put it a bit in the center better. So with the straight, the white line of the dog in the center in this way, okay? But I could do the same exactly with another picture. For example, you remember this picture? We can do the same here. So click again, crop and straighten. Then I don't touch the original proportion, but I will click on angle on the rule and I will use, and I will click, sorry, with the left button of the mouse here without releasing the button, drag and drop to the other edge of the lock. So you see it's not horizontal and I will release the button. Now the picture is correctly straightened. Now what I do usually is I want to use the third. For example, the eyes on the dog on the third. So I will make the picture smaller, but I don't want to cut the ear. So in this way, so I'm using the rule of third about the eyes, okay? We can go on, but the eye are going outside. So the picture, I will use this one, staying inside in the center of the eye and I will click enter. So we have uh, correctly, let me say, balanced the picture. If you don't like it, we can go back and move a bit the picture in this way, okay? For example, I will use this one. I want to unbalance a bit using a symmetric situation for the log here in this way. 
or I will make it bigger, I don't know what to do exactly, but let's start from this situation. I will use this one. Now, we can proceed with the first menu dedicated about the post-processing. Don't jump, start from the first and go on. So, the first menu is called basic. Basic doesn't mean that it's stupid or something like uh, too easy that we don't have to use it. On the contrary, it's amazing, it's very easy to use, but I need only to make you understand, also for advanced user, how to use it and manage it. So first of all, I need you to understand that all the basic menu is divided in three zones, in three menu. The first is the white balancing, that is about the temperature and the tint of the picture. The second is the tone, that is, uh, let me say, made with the exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites and blacks. And then there is the presence menu, where you can find the clarity, the dehaze, the vibrance and the saturation. We will proceed in this way, with the first, then the second and then the third. But you can see also an histogram here. It's amazing because many people don't watch at it, don't look the histogram, don't investigate on in. I think it's very important to understand what is happening because as you can see there is a central part that is exactly the exposure. If I move it, I click and I move, I'm moving the exposure. You can see here I've just moved the exposure. If I click twice with the left button of the mouse in the center I will come back from the first situation. Second thing that you can see is that the center part is the exposure. Then, just a bit on the right, we have the highlights and then we have the whites. So, if I want to move the whites, I will click and move and I will change the whites. You see? Click twice to come back or I can click here and drag and drop the highlights and I'm moving the highlights here, okay? Click twice to come back. In the same way, you can use the shadow here, so left click without releasing the left click and moving left or right the mouse to move exactly as you can see in the slider in the shadows is moving with the mouse left and right or click twice to come back and the blacks too. Okay, it's very interesting to understand and to see how we are missing some whites in this part. But the blacks are already touched. We are using the deep black somewhere, probably here, but we are not using the real white. So we can expand a bit this instrument. It's very important to understand also that there are two free angles in the right corner and in the left upper corner. If you don't click them, you don't see which part are clipped, are clipping in this moment. If you maintain them clipped, you can see with the blue parts if someone is clipped about the blacks and in the red part if someone is, is something is clipped about the whites. I can make you a demonstration. For example, I uprise the, the, the whites in this way, clipping completely the whites. You can see it's quite blinking. Look, now it's not clipped and now it's totally clipped. So is correctly, uh, let me say, underline it. It's totally white. It means that the white are clipped in one part, in the red part of the picture. If I exaggerate more, you will see the histogram totally breaking the right wall of the histogram and clipping everywhere. So the right part means only that those parts are totally uh, clipped. So I come back clicking twice. When you want to come back in something, as uh, the shot you took, just click with the left button of the mouse on the name or on the slider. For example, on the name of the slider that is white, I click twice and it comes back to the center. Okay, that's very important. Don't move the slider looking with the mouse to grab the slider and move the slider. Just click twice on white and you will see it changing. Okay? Then, uh, I want to show you exactly step by step how to proceed. So we are we have entered in the develop, we have cropped the picture with this button, we have just understood what the histogram means 
Okay? And now we can proceed, starting from the first menu, the white balancing, then the tone, and then the present. What about the white balancing? It's very important to understand if the picture needs to be more warmer, warmer or colder. It depends by you, by your mood, by your way to post-process, or maybe because you want to, uh, let me say, uh, rem um, rem you are reminding yourself the reality, so you want to make the picture warmer because you prefer warmer things or not. It depends by you. But sometimes it's not easy because if you don't have a calibrated monitor, you are going to do something really bad. So, what to do? Uh, I suggest usually to don't use the first value you see because this is only what the camera took and it could be wrong. So, you have two ways to proceed. The first way is to click the eyedrop, okay? Click with the left button of the mouse, go in the picture and pick a neutral point. Neutron point means a scale of gray in the reality. So, for example, these parts of the dog should be white or a kind of white or gray, or here too. If I click in this point, you can see the number under, uh, let me say, the squares, and you will see three numbers under the histogram too. The R that means the red, the G that means the green, and the B that, mean, that means the blue. When the three numbers are exactly the same, you are in a neutral point. But this is determined by the temperature of the picture, so you need to decide which is the right temperature. So, I usually go in the nose of the dog here, and I left click here. And you see, for the, let me say, the software, the correct temperature is 7000. But if I click twice, I come back to the shot I took during the shooting, okay? But there is another way to proceed. So you have to do this. Click and hold the key shift, and then the uppercase. So maintain, hold on the key, uppercase or shift, and double click in the slider of the temperature. And this is what happened. So for uh, Lightroom automatically select what it thinks that is the right white balancing. So in the shoot I took 8200. He thinks, the software thinks that clicking uppercase or shift and holding on the key and double click with the left button of the mouse on the slider, he thinks that the best way to work is 7500. But I also use, can use the eyedrop and select this point. Why not? And he is is suggesting me 7650 that I will use, okay? I'm using also an ISO monitor so I can understand exactly the colors on the picture. I think this is correct. I love this kind of, I don't want to make it too blue. There are many people that prefer colder things. It's not me. I prefer colder thing, but not orange. So in this way, I will work with something in the middle that I choose it by here, something like that. 6,900 is okay for me. And then the second thing to do is about the tint because it could be greenish, green, greenish, yeah, or to magenta. In this case, clicking twice, you come back to the shot that was 17. But you also can do this. So hold the key shift or uppercase and double click on the left button of the mouse. And the suggestion is 14. I will use this value. Okay, this is about the white balance. Why to post process and to work with the white balance for first and not with tone like the exposure and contrast? Because the white balancing affects totally the tone and not the contrary. So um, you have to try, but if you post process starting from the tone and then you go back to the white balancing, you are doing a mess you will see that everything changed. So I suggest to start with the white balancing, but it is natural because this is the way to follow, to make it easy. Then about the exposure, same things. I can move it on the right, on the left. I don't know exactly what to do. Clicking twice, I come back to the shot that I took, but I will click shift and double click with the left button of the mouse on the slider. And the proposal of Lightroom is plus 0.11 only. 
let's go to see from something bigger what is happening. We can see that there is something clipped here in the blacks. It's very easy to control it, but I will show you later. Probably we are a bit clipping and burning the blacks, just a bit. And the same things I wanted to be here to understand the details, because the second thing that I'm working with is the contrast. Many people prefer to go up with the contrast. This is totally wrong. Usually it's quite better to go down with the contrast, revealing more detail without crisping too much the picture. You see, this is the beginning. I click shift or uppercase and double click on the left part, the left button of the mouse and it's suggesting me minus 26. Maybe not too much, but something in the middle could be something interesting. For example, minus 14. Then I proceed with the highlights. Same things about the highlights. Uh, I want to show you what's happening if I click shift and uh, double click on the left button of the mouse. Look. He suggested me to rise down the highlights. I don't like this move about Lightroom. I prefer to use my mind. And in this case, I love so much the brightness of the image. So I don't touch the highlights. But you can work in the shadow. You know what you can do with the shadow? Look, zoom to one to one. You can select here the, the format. In this case, one to one. And uh, look what happened in the Darken part, darkest part, part of the dog. If I rise up the shadow, simply the blue part that were, were meaning that something were clipped in the blacks, they are not clipped anymore. But this is only the way to do that. If you click Shift and double click on the slider of the shadow, you will see Lightroom proposing you plus 34. Maybe not so much, but we can go down a bit, something like that, plus 18. And we can proceed with the whites. Let's see what's happening if I ask to Lightroom to give me help. So I will click Shift and double click on the slider. Wow, why is doing that? Look at the, the, the histogram. Lightroom suggested me to go and touch the right side of the histogram to gain in the whites when the shot was something like that, not so much. Because we are in the snow, it's better to don't exaggerate. I will rise up a bit, but not too much. Just 20 is enough, not too much. I don't want to lose detail in the white. For me, it's very interesting, it's very important. It's mandatory to don't destroy the whites, as many people, as many people do. So they don't care about the white part of the dog. They destroy every, everything and all the details that I think are so important in the dog. Okay, in the quality of the picture. Also about the blacks, you can move. Look, if I go to 3-1 zoom, so very big, I can see exactly the blue part that are explaining the burned part of the picture. I can rise up a bit the blacks, just a bit. Look, what happened? Probably just something like plus 10, plus 8, plus 8 are enough to don't have anything clipped anymore. Okay? Now we can proceed with the presence. I want to explain you uh, what the sliders mean inside the present. We have the clarity, the dehaze, the vibrance and the saturation. The clarity simply is the micro contrast of the picture. Sometimes people love it so much from the beginning and want to use it all the time. Look, because the more I add it to the picture and the more is crisp, is more scrunchy, you know? I would like you to understand that it's very dangerous and it's better to have something just a bit, just a bit improved about the clarity. So use it just a bit. 10 is a lot sometimes. And then the dehaze. You know what is what the dehaze is? It's like removing a fog in the picture that we don't have in this case. But look what happened. If I add dehaze, I'm removing white from the picture. So when it's very interesting to use, you know why? And uh, you know when? Look, I told you that I've brought with you, I've inserted this picture, I've imported this picture to understand this concept. You know, we have the sun totally clipped, but you know, it's very, you can manage it. We can manage it with the whites, so we can go down with the whites. But maybe it's better to do that directly in uh, locally and not totally from the beginning, because the more we go down with the highlights, 
or the whites and the more all the picture will suffer this so I won't change them maybe just a bit of highlights just a bit just to show you that we don't have any clip it anymore it's very easy the second thing that I want to show you is how the DAs work you know we have a bit of fog we are in mountain there is an amazing atmosphere and look what happened if I add the DAs look at the sky so if I find a way I want to, don't use the clipper part. If I find a way to control on the sky, look how my amazing is. This is the beginning, and this is now. Just change a few parameters. Maybe I can rise up the shadow just a bit, and the exposure a bit, and so on. I can change the temperature of the picture, make it very, look how amazing is the picture. And we did it in one minute. So this is the imported picture, and this is the post-processed picture. We can switch from the beginning to the post-processing just clicking the, the Y. So, before and after on the right. It's very interesting. This is just to show you how the D8s works. Okay? Come back to our picture that was this one. So, okay? We can add a bit of D8s, but it's not mandatory in this case. Then we have the vibrance and the saturation. We can try to ask him to ask him to the to ask to the software how to manage the slider vibrance and saturation. Look what happened. Shift double left click of the mouse on the slider. He's adding a bit of vibrance. Vibrance is the vibrance of colors without affecting the saturation. And also we can do it with the saturation. So shift and double left click on the saturation. And this is the image post-processed by him. We didn't do any difficult parts. We have just made, a, let me say, a, a first post-processing that could be used for the client if you want, but we can go on. The trick is to don't change too many things altogether. But look, we did so many things. We can see the before and after in this way, look. Because we reach at this point and we don't want to lose what we did, we can go on the left, above the history, we have the snapshots. We can click plus and, you know, we have a, snapsh a snapshot name. I will leave the date and the hour of the snapshot now and create. You see, this is what I created. And I can go back, for example, in another version, maybe more let me say clicking auto so making him to work with me in this way more colder so making something different okay and i will call this one i will save this one as snapshot again with another name so the the time is changed so we have two snapshot the snapshot of before and the snapshot more cold now, and we can select just from here to here, and Lightroom will change all the parameters we did in the post processing. So it's very easy. And we can use and add many snapshots. For example, from here, we can go on making it a bit warmer. For example, we can add more clarity because we want to improve the clarity. Also, we can rise up the shadow a bit this time. For example, because we want to rise up the shadow and also the contrast in this way. And look what's happened. I will save this snapshot again. So plus create. So we have three snapshots. The beginning, the colder version, and the last version. You see, I prefer the first one. It's softer to post-process. You always, this is a really trick, is really tricky. It's very important to always work on something smooth. Don't, you don't have to reach immediately the result. We did it in two minutes. Uh, in my real post-processing, I don't touch too much these sliders. Just the temperature, for sure, the exposure a bit, and the contrast, as you see, just a small retouching, because this is not the real retouching. I will add the effect later in the next lessons. So at the moment, I will stop here. It's very important that you can do it with all the picture you want, for example, very easily. We can do it again with another picture, look. We, I will change picture, for example, I don't know, this one, for example, why not? It's very nice. So starting from the beginning, but faster. I crop the picture. For example, something like that. I love the picture, but I want the dog to stay 
in a kind of rule of thirds, something like that. Then what I do is I, I could I could make it smaller a bit, but I love the background, so I would like to maintain the orange of the backlight of the sunset. So I will proceed with the white balancing in this way. Probably here is the gray, so I will click here, and you see this is not a black and white border collie, but a brown, white, a red and white border collie, and it's correct. I see it brown. Look at the eyes, they are amazing. Then about the expose, where I click shift and double click, ah, I prefer to go back. I prefer it more brighter, okay? More bright, more. Uh, I, I want to see the whites on the dog. But look what happened. If I affect, I can go on with the contrast, removing a bit of contrast, with the highlights without changing the highlights, maybe adding a bit of white, white, everything, just a bit, and the shadow a bit. It this way, I will add a bit of clarity and the D8s, just a bit. And this is what happened. Now I will click on the vibrance, giving more vibrance on the colors. And you, you know, we didn't do anything so difficult. Just, this is the picture, we post process it. It's very nice. We didn't do anything special. So for the people that don't love to post process too much, save the snapshot. Save. Saving the snapshot means saving all the changement we did, all the adjustment we did. Not it's not a JPEG. It's about everything. Save it on a file. So all the history we did that is here. So we crop it three times, we change the white balance, we change the exposure two times, the contrast, the white clipping, the shadow, the clarity, the DAs and the vibrance. And this is the end. And the beginning, just click, I told you why, the epsilon. So this is the beginning and this is the end. So for people that don't love too much to post-process the picture, this is a very easy way to, let me say, to post-process. This was the beginning I want to show you because I came back to the crop rectangle to have the same size and same proportion and I want to save the snapshot. Say, and look, this is post-processed and this is not post-processed. It's very easy and we didn't do anything yet. So, I hope you have understood very well what we did because it's very important to approach to the next third lessons about how to manage strongly and very easily all the pictures for you. I want to show you, maybe with a one-to-one -one zoom, how much is detailed the picture, just changing a bit the things. This was the original and this is the post-processing. It's amazing and we didn't do anything yet. Okay, if you like it, follow me in the, same, in the next lessons and uh, see you next week and please share it to, with all your friends because I think the powerful of this post-processing is to share with people what we are able to do without being afraid about anything and explaining people that all the things can be easy, very easy to do also the difficult things. Mm? So beware from people that tell you that everything is difficult, that it, you have to do long post-processing or long workshops to do something. This is very easy and I want all the people to get the benefit of that. So this is the reason because I'm sharing everything. So step by step we will grow in, but today we already have seen something really that seems complicated because if I show you directly this picture, you don't know what I did. Then I spent 30 seconds from this picture to reach this picture and I think the client would be really, really happy just with this post-processing. So you didn't spend so much time, nothing. This is a secret to have the success in Lightroom. Do all the things easily. And the only way to do something easy is to understand how it works. So don't use the action and use your workflow or mine and change it for you. Okay? Bye and see you the next time again. Bye bye.